Pop subs are generally discouraged in React, partly because it goes against React's core philosophy, which is based on a unidirectional data flow, where data flows from parent components to child components. A pub sub enables you to break out of this and allows you to create multiple data channels. So for example, you could have a child dictate the data to a parent or even parallel components without the parent managing that flow. This makes them really unpredictable and very hard to debug. If you abuse a pub sub system and integrate it absolutely everywhere, it will be very hard to track where state changes are coming from, so it can easily become a maintainability nightmare. Having said this, they have their place in React, although they should be used sparingly. Let me show you a particular use case where they shine. So for this example, I have a chat application. And you know, a chat application has a lot of data flows. You need to constantly listen to message updates via a WebSocket channel. You need to manipulate your cached data potentially every second. And there are a lot of different parts that depend on each other. The main one being the WebSocket channel. So here we add an event listener for a message and we get an event. And then when we get an new message, we update the cache accordingly. And when a message is read, we can do the same. And we may have hundreds of different events. So we could have an event for an updated message, a new person joined your group chat, and so on. So let's say in this chat application, you want to have a notification access badge. So you want to show a banner that is going to prompt the user to enable notifications. So when the notification dot permission is default, we know that it has not been denied or granted. So we show the button and we request permission and then we set the new permission to our state. Now, in the case that it is granted or denied, we do not render anything. Now we want to show a notification. There are different places where you can do this. You can pretty much move this logic over to the WebSocket listener. That's one way to do it. Although you'd have to check the permission there, you'd have to do it per every single call, or you could move this to a global store. But notice how we're overcomplicating things. My advice is to collocate everything. If this component manages the permission, then why should you have this show notification function live in a completely separate component? In this case, in the listener for the WebSocket. Since this component is the one and only component that cares about notifications, let this component manage sending notifications. Now you might be thinking, okay, I get your idea, but I still don't justify the use of a pop sub here. Well, let me show you another feature. Let's say we want to show an arrow down button here. When we're scrolled up, so we're viewing older messages and a new message comes in. We want to say new message and then an arrow down button. And if you click on it, it is going to automatically scroll you down. Now for this, you could say, well, just use use effect. Use effect in itself is already a pop sub. You can subscribe to whatever you pass into the dependency array. Now if that's true, you can use up use effect for this. So you have your logic here. And well, when this changes, you're going to show the button, update the state locally, whatever. The problem with this approach is that you need to do more validations. It's not just checking messages and whenever they change, update the state because anytime you update the cache and maybe the other user read a message and now you want to show the blue ticks, well, that is going to cause this use effect to be executed again. So now you need to store the previous message length compare it to the actual messages. If it's different, then we know we got a new message. So update the state, show the button, update the ref. There are a couple of edge cases that can easily be avoided using a pub sub. So how can we implement a pub sub? Well, for that, I like to use hooks. I do not like to subscribe 
transcribe manually per every single component. That is extremely tedious, requires a lot of boilerplate, does something that can be simplified by using a custom hook. So for that, I'm going to create a hooks directory and I'm going to call this use chat events. Now for this, I'm going to be using the event emitter from event emitter three, which is a very straightforward to have a pop sub system. So for this, you define your events. So you can say type events and then you can say new message and then this will be a function that takes in the event which is a message so chat message and will not return anything you could have a red message or updated message whatever and then you would create a hook so use chat events and then here you receive some arguments so you can say a new message and you can subscribe to this if you want and then you get the event which is a chat message and then all you need to do is say react dot use effect and then here you need to pass in options you create the emitter so you can say const chat event emitter is equal to a new event emitter of events and then you simply say chat event emitter dot on on new message and then you pass in the callback and then for the cleanup function all you need to do is unsubscribe to new messages now for this you can say if options dot a new message is different from undefined subscribe to new message and you will do the same with every single one and then all you need to do is come here and then say use chat events you import this and then you can pass in the callback so you get the event and you can just show it right away now you can get the new message here so maybe you want to show the body to be the content. So for example, content, which is of type string, and then we can say new message.content. And then on the message list, you can use it. So you can have const has new message, although this would be handled within this hook because you want to know if the user is at the bottom. So if we have a new message, so use chat events on new message. And then here you can have a has new message. And then you can check if not is at the bottom then set has new message to true and then you can return this here and then you can consume this in the message list so as you can see this is very straightforward and it doesn't require much setup now how can you emit the events well for that you could export the chat event emitter but what i would prefer to do is say use chat events and we can rename this to use events and then you can say export const use chat events is equal to object dot assign then use events and then the actual emitter and then you can come here to the WebSocket connection or the listener and you can say use chat events dot emitter dot emit and then you can say new message and you pass in the message and that's pretty much it now do I recommend using a pop sub in react well for the this type of use cases go ahead use it but do not abuse it they might seem like a really convenient solution for a lot of problems but trust me they are way harder to maintain stick to the core of react now this part of the video is for effect users if you are using effect effect comes with so many utility functions that there is no need to for example install this event emitter 3 library Pub subs are already shipped with effect. So how can you achieve this behavior? Well, all you need to do is create a pub sub. So I create this outside of the hook because I want all consumers of the hook to subscribe to the same pub sub, obviously. And all I do is create an unbounded pub sub. So we want to ensure we can receive every single message. Then in the use effect, I run fork. So I get the fiber here. So as you can see, this is the subscription fiber. And then then all I do is subscribe to the pub sub so I get a DQ and then I convert this to a stream. 
to stream from queue as in the DQ. And then every time we get a new message, we just tap into that message and we call options dot a new message and pass in the message. And then we return effect dot void, which is just an effect that succeeds with void. And this is required because if I remove it, as you can see, we get a type error. That's because the tab function here requires you to return an effect in the callback as you can see here. And then I run this stream. So as we can see, it runs the stream only for its effects. The immediate elements are discarded. And then we say effect.scoped and the cleanup function, very simple, run fork and we interrupt the fiber. And that's pretty much it. Now to emit an event, well, all we do is say effect.runsync and then pops up dot publish to the chat pops up, which is self and then the message. And we just assign this here, although this could be named a mid new message event. And then we can replace this here. And as we can see, if I now come here to my two clients and log this. So here, as you can see, we're logging the new message So we're subscribing. Let's see if it works. And if we type something, as we can see, we get new message and we get the message here. So everything works as expected. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.